Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Math 30-3, Chapter 1, Section 2, Part 2, Working with Linear Relations. Now, we've worked on this graph. Uh, I just pointed out it's linear and goes to the origin, so that's two characteristics you should note. Now, the other two questions, the last two for this one, slope. Now, as you recall from last lesson, slope is rise over run. So go back to the graph. We go here. Oh, you poopy stuff. We have our run down here, which is 7, and our rise, which is 8750. Now, to get that right, let's look at the data points here. This is 7 and 87, 8750. Right from my data table back here. Okay? So, the rise is 8750. 7, which becomes. By the way, we didn't have to do that much work. We really should have looked at the graph and went, oh, wait a minute. That slope is the rate of change, which is 1250 per hour. Like I said, right back here. That is the slope of the graph. Slope is the hourly pay or the rate of change. So if I recognize that, I didn't have to do this calculation. Slope or rate of change. Now, how long it will take Kalinda to earn $150? This is extrapolation. Going beyond. Okay. The long way to do this is slope or rate of change is rise over run. When we did these calculations last class, the slope is $12.50. The rise, how much is she going to earn? $150. The run is time. Or, sorry, I should call that x. We don't know what the time is, so we normally call it x. How do we solve one of these? Like I showed last class, with that sneaky cross multiplication, you get x is 150 divided by 1250. You grab Mr. Calculator, and that comes out to be 12 hours. So, if Kalinda wants to make $150 to buy something, she's got to work 12 hours kind of sucks, but that's life. So you earn money by working. Okay? Now, Emily wears a pedometer to count the steps she walks to work every day. The following table shows the number of steps she walks on average and the amount of time spent walking. So time in minutes, 0, 10, 15, and 35. The number of steps, 0, 820, 1230, and not a lot of data points, but enough that we can graph because I'm going, yes, of course, got a graph of the data. So here, make the graph a little smaller so or page a little smaller so we can see all the data points. Now, time down here. Units. So please put down your units so I know what we're talking about. Is this minutes, hours, seconds, days, years, whatever? Because some people are paid by the day, some people are paid by the year. So, uh, time 35. Oh, let me see. Can I go? Yes, I can. 10, 20, 30, 40. Notice I'm not lab I'm going by fives, but I'm not labeling every number because I'm lazy. Now, the uh, dependent variable, distance, 
or number of steps is, let me see, well, it starts at zero and it goes to 2,800, almost 2,000. Let's see. 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, 200, 400, 600, 800, 2,000, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200. Yes, that works. So if we make every step 200, every one of these lines 200, and that's getting messy, so I'm just going to do every other line 800, 1,000, 1,200, 1,600, 2,000, 2,400, 2,800. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, there we go. So, Plot of the data, zero, zero is the first point. Good. The next point was 10 minutes and 820. So 400, 800, 820, something like that. 15 and 1230, so 15, 1200, and the last point is 35 here. And 2870. So 2870, 30, 35, right here. So, not perfect, but let's play, connect the dots. Woohoo! It's a strange line. Now, did I do a really good job drawing this? No, did I do a decent job and hit the points ish? Yes, I'm happy. Now, two things. One, there's a question here. Should you connect the points on the graph? Why or why not? Well, here, getting sneaky and I'm putting in a definition. The definition is, well, we say no, because connect the dots. Sorry, I should put that. Connect the dots of the data is continuous. Can, so what I'm trying to say here is time is continuous, but it's steps. Can you take half a step? Really, no. You're taking a whole step. So I shouldn't I shouldn't play connect the dots here. I can make it a dash line, give you an indication, but I can't make it a solid line. I really shouldn't be playing connect the dots here. Technically, I think this is discrete. That is not continuous. Can you take half a step or a tenth of a step? No. You either take a step or you don't. So technically, this is discrete. All right. So the next question, and that's a definition you got to know. Yes, I know this is turning into a language arts class. So second to last question, calculate the slope. And does the graph appear to be linear? Well, yes, it does appear to be linear. Slope is rise or run. Now, I can do the fancy y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or I can just look at, go back to the graph I drew, and go. Rise and run. My run is 35. My rise is 2870. Is so what does this mean about Emily's speed or number of steps? Well, to be more specific, this is 82 steps a minute. I should include my units, and I didn't do it up here, which is wrong. I really should have my units up here. That's a boo-boo on my part, because the rise is steps. and the run is time or minutes, right? So that's what I need to be able to do. Any questions? All right. Well, if not, 
good luck. Go work on the classwork and the activities. Otherwise, watch the videos and shoot me an email. Good luck. See you in class.